Hey guys, David here from the Roller Coaster Project. This week we got our Trinus 3D printer. I know what you're thinking, we've had a 3D printer before, we had a solid doodle. Um, we got rid of the solid doodle. This came across on Kickstarter and we liked all the features that were on it. One of the best features of the Trinus 3D printer is all lead screw design. As opposed to the solid doodle, which actually was belt driven, so over time as things would heat up or whatever, or belts would lose tension, you actually get a fairly inaccurate part. The lead screw is a consistent pitch, every time it rotates, gives you the same measurement. We're going to look at unboxing it, assembling it, and then testing it, and then comparing the parts it makes to what we've done on our CNC. Welcome to the Roller Coaster Project. When the printer box arrived, we opened it up to find a letter from Kodama showing what we ordered, the printer in a box, and an enclosure. The enclosure we didn't put together quite yet, but we will later for our polycarbonate test. So once you open the box, you have, of course, a quick start guide, the instruction manual, the assembly, and here comes some uh, starter PLA, and then, of course, the different parts. That's an actual heat bed, but we didn't install that either to go with our enclosure. And then, of course, an 8GB SD card to load your files on and to have auto print. Here's the extruder. And this is the base. Then you can see the four modular uh, axes. Two Z axes, one X and one Y. This is the enclosure, but we didn't assemble it. Following our assembly guide, we start off by putting the rubber feet on the part. Since this is on the base, it also has some holes punched through where we can attach our Z columns. Since everything is modular, assembly is relatively quick and easy. The holes are not perfectly aligned, so you do have to kind of tweak it a bit. But once they're all locked in place, then we can begin attaching the different axes. So now, we're adjusting the Y. And now the X. The X will mount to both of the Z columns. And now we're going to do the extrusion head. Everything's very modular about this printer, which makes it great, and it makes it very easy to assemble, so you get less of a DIY style of printer. However, there are some features, of course, that you do still feel like it is made by somebody in their basement. Case in point, the control board. The wiring was a little touchy as far as plugging it in because it was basically Arduino controlled. And then the power cord, this is a, an issue I have with it, in that it's cantilevered off so it doesn't actually feel secure. And what was supposed to happen when we plugged it in and finally threaded in the filament and pushed in the SD card, notice how we do it a few times, it didn't work because it didn't have a file on it. So we had to go to Pengo, their software. The software kept crashing until we found some workarounds. The file that should have come on there should have an autoprint.pcode file name, and that is the only way you'll get the printer to work. So once we had a loaded file that we created, as opposed to the one that was supposed to come with the printer, we began printing finally. The green PLA came with the printer, but we ordered an extra spool of polycarbonate from their partner, Polymaker. The polycarbonate will require a heated bed and the enclosure to be installed prior to printing to avoid warping. Here is our finished plastic roller coaster chassis. Now the moment of truth where we test our plastic car against our aluminum roller coaster car which was anodized to see which is closer to the actual measurement. And the biggest surprise to us was that the 3D printer was actually closer than our CNC mill. The Trinus was a mere three thousandths of an inch off from the actual designed measurements as opposed to the TAG was eight thousandths of an inch off. 
my rating for this printer, somewhere around an 8 out of 10. Uh, the software is the biggest drawback to it, and then just, it's, it, they all still feel like a DIY kind of thing until you get into the MakerBot or the Form 1. It is phenomenal for what you pay for, and the lead screw is a good idea. That's what sold me on it. Even though I have a CNC with ball screws now, to prototype something quickly, or if you wanted to make a plastic version of what you're making, it gets you pretty damn close. So I hope this was good enough information for you. If you have any comments, please list them below. If you have any questions, I'll definitely answer them. Please like this video and share it. I haven't seen really any reviews on the Trinus 3D because I guess they're just now rolling out, but I was fortunate enough to get one of the first few shipments. Uh, as always, thank you for following along. Yet again, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.